Well, at least this time I didn't have to have blood drawn. This time. <laughs> mentioned in yesterday's video I wanted to spend today talking about what I've learned after being on Adderall for four years because when I started on this journey four years ago first by being diagnosed with ADHD and then being prescribed Adderall there was a lot that I didn't know even though I did do a lot of research on the subject of course I did a lot of research I have ADHD but if you remember my 2020 Vlogtober vlogs, you may remember the one that I did on how Adderall made me sleepy and I wasn't sure why that was. Of course, now I understand that ADHD medication like Adderall, which is a stimulant, will affect people with ADHD differently. It does stimulate the brain, but it stimulates the prefrontal cortex right up here, the, which is the part of the brain that we with ADHD have issues with. And stimulating that part of the brain makes regulation of the rest of the brain easier. And part of that involves, of course, quelling a lot of those random thoughts that keep popping into your head, which once that quiets down a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit easier to sleep. Caffeine has that same effect to some degree, and that's why anytime I ever drank a caffeine drink, I would immediately take a nap. So what was a mystery to me back then makes perfect sense now because I understand the process more. The same thing goes with taking Adderall. There was a lot that I didn't know about it until I started taking it. And so here are the three things that I've learned after taking Adderall for the last four years. The first thing that I learned is that Getting a prescription for Adderall, getting that prescription filled, and getting refills for that prescription is really difficult. It's a lot more difficult than it needs to be, and it will never get any easier. Even though I have been clinically diagnosed with ADHD, and I have to admit, I am obviously in a place of privilege for a lot of different reasons. I still have to jump through hoops to get my Adderall prescription filled. We've all heard those stories about general practitioners who have a patient who complains about ADHD-like symptoms and just automatically writes them a script for Adderall. And maybe there are doctors like that out there, but I've never met one. Every doctor I know has been leery about writing a prescription. And I can understand that. It is, after all, a controlled substance. But when you have doctors who are worried about litigation because the possibility you might wind up getting addicted to your Adderall or you're lying about your symptoms and you're going to just turn around and sell it to college kids, along with the opinions of a number of people in the general populace who believe that ADHD doesn't exist and Adderall is just an excuse for people to get high. Because of all of that circling what is really a controlled substance, there are so many hoops that you jump through just to get the medicine that you need. And like I say, I acknowledge that I'm in a privileged position. I can only imagine what it's like for other people who not only have a harder time getting their prescribed medication, they may not even be able to get it at all. And that sucks. Which is made worse because if you have ADHD, you probably have rejection sensitivity dysphoria. And so being pushy is just not something you're really into. Plus, it's understandable to be worried that if you push too hard to try to get your medication, the medication that you need, because it's a controlled substance, you come off looking like a junkie. I certainly worried about that. So for all the hoops that I had to jump through and have to continue to jump through, to keep getting my Adderall, including switching general practitioners because the one that I had kept dropping the ball and not sending in my prescription. I learned not to take all of this personally. This wasn't hard because there was something wrong with me or I was doing something wrong. It was hard because the system makes it hard. And it's not just hard for me, it's hard for everybody. Some of the difficulties do make sense. Others are completely pointless. But regardless to all of that, I can't blame myself. It's not my fault. Sometimes all a person can do in this situation is just be patient and hopefully things will work out. The second thing that I learned is that Adderall or Vyvanse or any of the ADHD medications that are out there, 
they're not a silver bullet and they're not going to solve all your problems for you. A lot of us, when we started taking ADHD medications, had a lot of high hopes for it. A lot of us had this idea that once we started taking ADHD medication, that these waves of neurotypicality would just wash over our brain. And although these medications do help, they don't get rid of ADHD completely, nor could they. They help us get a leg up so that we can deal with our issues, but they don't take those issues away. It's like a life jacket. A life jacket isn't going to help you become an Olympic level swimmer, but it will keep you from drowning. But it can be so easy to get a wrong idea about what these medications will actually do for you. So much so, in fact, that I know of people who have quit taking their ADHD medication because it didn't help them the way they thought it was going to. They thought that they would be able to pop a pill and suddenly become neurotypical. But here's something to think about. If you've been diagnosed with ADHD, you've probably had it your whole life. And if you've had it your whole life, how the hell would you know what neurotypical feels like? You have nothing to compare it on. You may have heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is when someone doesn't have a skill in something, they tend to overestimate how good they are at that skill because knowing how to do something well and knowing how well you do something is a very similar skill set. So how can you really tell how well a medication is making you more neurotypical if you don't have any neurotypical experience to compare it with. And it's unreasonable to think that ADHD medication is going to be able to solve all your life's problems. Do you know how many neurotypical people have problems? Well, all of them. Yes, ADHD can cause some problems in your life and can exacerbate other problems as well. Life is difficult. And ADHD medicine, like I said before, can be like that life jacket that keeps you from going under. But that's only one part of learning how to cope with your ADHD symptoms. I've always said that the biggest help in dealing with ADHD has always been knowing that you have it in the first place. Knowing you have ADHD means that you can make allowances and you can put plans into place that will help you mitigate the problems that arise. Taking Adderall didn't mean that I didn't have to use my phone's calendar anymore to remind myself of appointments or that I didn't need to use the Pomodoro timer anymore to keep me focused and on point when I was in the middle of a very tedious task I needed to do. The biggest takeaway that I've gotten from all of this is that when it comes to the effectiveness of Adderall, for me, I'm in the absolutely worst position to determine how well it's working. I'm not really in the best place to see if the medication's working, how well it's doing, and its full benefits to me. Some other people notice, and they've mentioned it, but I may not always see it, and you might not always see it. So don't get discouraged if your ADHD medication isn't working as well as you think that it should. And certainly don't give up taking it. Take advantage of the leg up that it's giving you and make a better life for yourself. The third thing that I've learned in four years of taking Adderall is that Adderall isn't here to fix me because I'm not broken. I got beat up a lot as a kid in every way you can beat up a kid because people did not understand and I didn't understand what was going on in my head. ADHD made my life difficult and because of that, I was made to feel worthless and lazy. But when I was finally diagnosed with ADHD, I understood why I acted in the ways that I did. And I knew that it wasn't my fault. But those bad feelings never went away. They were just transferred. My chain of thinking changed from, I'm dumb and lazy and bad, to my ADHD made me dumb and lazy and bad. And it's taken me some time through taking my Adderall and also through therapy to understand that ADHD or not, there's nothing wrong with me. ADHD is not a bad thing. It's just a different way of thinking. When I understood what it meant to actually have ADHD, I could not only mitigate some of the problems that would arise, but I also learned about my strengths and I use all of that to my advantage. A good example of that's when I'm writing. When I have to sit down and write a scene, 
I'll take my Adderall to help me focus on the scene and not get distracted. But if I'm brainstorming ideas, I don't take my Adderall because I want that ADHD crazy mind, all these ideas just popping in my head because it makes brainstorming so much easier and it gives me so much to work with. So when ADHD works for me in any situation, I go with it. And when it works against me, I got plans to deal with it. Thinking that any pill or a shot or some big grand gesture is gonna make your life better. Well, you remember this video I did? You remember this one? Making your life better is a day-to-day -day thing. And ADHD medications like Adderall can help with that. They're not the solution, but they can become part of the solution. They can become a part of a program that helps you make your life what you want it to be. Deciding to take Adderall was one of the best decisions I made, but it's not the only good decision that I've made. And all of those decisions, good decisions, add up to good days, good years, and a good life. I do wanna end the video by saying that if you're starting your journey with ADHD medication and there's anything that I can do to help, any questions that you have that I might be able to answer, please leave me a comment on this video or another video or you know, send me a message. I would be glad to help you in any way that I can. I've seen how on my channel, the videos where I talk about my journey with ADHD and taking Adderall have been helpful to people. I've seen that in the number of views that they've gotten and also in the comments. And I wanna to continue to be a help to people because people were a help to me and I wanna pay that forward. And there's also a lot of great channels on YouTube with really good ADHD information channels that I've referred to and have been a help to me. And I'm going to put some of those channels in the description below. So one more Vlogtober vlog video done and one left to go. Halloween. The subject of tomorrow's video, I guess you'll find out tomorrow. We'll see you then.